ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته to all of you I'm sorry I can meet each one of you and I certainly would like to do that uh, in if it was a little less of a rush that I came straight from the airport but uh, alhamdulillah it's a pleasure to be amongst all of you uh, I have heard many good things about uh, this community that has formed over here uh, there's a lot of sincerity in this in this group and inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase this and reward you all inshallah for your sincerity and the work that you've been doing uh, in this path uh, what is the Burda Sharif? What is a little history about it? And most of you already probably know about it, but just uh, I'll mention a few things. And then uh, for whose Urs we are sitting here and we have, we've gathered for that as well, the Urs of uh, Amma Huzur, Hazrat Bibi Makbul Nisa, Rahmatullah Alayha. Um, I may not be able to say a lot because I met her for a very brief amount of time, but whatever I remember, I'll, I'll try to, uh, to speak about it. And then we'll jump into the dhikr of uh, Buddha Sharif itself. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Adi Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa Mubarak wa Sallam. The Buddha Sharif, uh, one of uh, the favorite Khasaid, Khasida Buddha Sharif of the Ummah. If uh, something, if there's something that you want to define in one word, what the Burda Sharif is, it is a love poem about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this uh, is not just reflective of the love that Hazrat Imam Busiri rahmatullahi had for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but the qabuliyat or the maqbul, it, it it was one of those texts that became maqbul in the ummah. Right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ex it's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had accepted it because it was so widespread. Right, when things are problematic, it's the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sunnah that He will not make things that are problematic to be so widely spread. And it has gained one of the things that gains uh, if, we, if we study urf of uh, a custom of a people even if it's a custom of in a certain place at a certain time uh, when something gains popularity amongst a community so much that the sane and adil people amongst them accept it then that also can become part of the Sharia I'm not saying that the Buddha is part of the Sharia but it's just giving an analogy of uh, what when something gets so much uh, acceptance in the Ummah uh, inshallah this is a text that we can be very confident about and uh, you'll find that this particular qasida is uh, recited by people in so many different countries of the world in so many different languages also apart from the Arabic translated into other languages and sung in uh, recited in such a beautiful form in different tars, in different forms in different uh, 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 ways of, of uh, reciting it uh, that you will never run out of uh, listening or you coming across a new way of, of reciting this poem so uh, and you get a different flavor in every country it's been uh, there are certain verses that as uh, those who have recited this they will know that they will feel more confident in reading certain verses in a certain uh, a meter or in a, certain, in a certain way all right and then the Arabs on the other hand have a similar thing that they may recite it in a certain way and they'll feel more close to that just a little bit about the, the history of this Imam Busir Rahmatullahi a man who was uh, a poet of the uh, kings he used to uh, he was an orator he used to recite poetry read poetry to the kings praising those kings and uh, that's how he would also earn his living in a way he was also a scholar by the way we should not think that he was just somebody who was a poet for the kings he was a scholar a scholar in the deen as well mm -hmm. uh, imam busiri rahmatullahi once uh, he he had many friends many people who were close to him 
and it was because of his closeness to the king right when you get close to the president for instance of a country you're close to a king then people want to also become your friend right so it's that sort of situation um, but once he, he became ill and uh, he was paralyzed half of his body became paralyzed and he was uh, slowly lost all his friends because he didn't have the wealth anymore uh, the fame anymore so he lost all those friends slowly, slowly until he was alone. Now he wrote the Qasida Burda Sharif before he was even paralyzed. It wasn't like he wrote it after that. He had written it before. So it was reflective that this was a man who was deeply in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also. When, uh, so when he was ill and there was nobody around him, by himself one night he started weeping and he started reciting the Burda Sharif and he recited it and read, read it until he went to sleep while shedding tears uh, and he saw a dream then and in the dream he sees Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam come to him and put his blessed cloak on Imam Busiri now, I can give you many stories of awliya, the friends, the saints, uh, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awliya Allah, where they would visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they would see visions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or they would uh, open up the Quran and they will find the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gifted to them and where they see it in a dream and, it, and it's given to them. They open it and they find it there or they find uh, the Prophet Sallallahu giving them uh, bread or something like that and when they wake up they have it in their hands so these things have happened amongst the uh, awliya so what Imam Busiri it wasn't a surprise that when he awoke from that he found the Burda Sharif of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is the cloak the shirt of Rasulullah the, the, the shawl of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his body and he was completely healed as a result okay uh, Imam Busiri then leaves his home for uh, for the marketplace and he goes out there and uh, a Madzub Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him will you recite that poem that you were reciting last night so he said well which poem are you talking about even though he probably knew what he's talking about, right? So the man says, the one that begins with Amin Tadakurin Jirani Bidi Salamin Mazaj Tadam Anjara bin Mukhlatin Bidami. Right? The beginning of uh, Buddha Sharif. So he immediately recognized that this is a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him some openings. So let me hear what he has to say. So he said that, how, he asked him, how is it that you know I was reading this last night? He said, how would I not know when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned his face away from us and left a gathering where we were in and came to you. <laughs> right? And so they, they saw that. You know, the awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, they, they have gatherings of their own. And that can be in a spiritual realm, physical realm, Allah Alam, but they will have gatherings where the Qutub uh, and the Awtad and all they get together and they they, uh, they are to carry out some of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to by their duas be accepted um, and they discuss the affairs of the Ummah and things like that so this was one of those gatherings and uh, then after that of course uh, that Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the poem, the Qasida from him and it started spreading and became widely accepted uh, all over the world. That's uh, just a brief history of what the Qasida Purda Sharif is. Now there are many verses that the awliya through experience and again you cannot go and find a text in the hadith or anything about that because this comes later. Uh, through experience that if you recite certain verses that it could be applied as a healing for specific problems and specific illnesses uh, this is also one of the uh, proofs of the Qabuliyat of the Burda Sharif um, now this is these are spiritual matters 
don't ask me to provide texts and dalail and things like that. We are people of love and we will talk about things of love, right? But when it comes to fiqh and ahkam and things like that, then we have to talk about the, uh, the rulings and where things come from. But this is a matter of the heart, a science that is transferred heart to heart from generation to generation. Um, needless to say, uh, I was one of the uh, I guess lucky ones with Shagufta Ben. She visited us when I was staying, uh, visiting Egypt at that time. When I went to Egypt, one of the things, I was only there for uh, my wife and kids, uh, two sons, traveled there in, in uh, 2010 to memorize the Quran. That was uh, the kids, we wanted them to memorize the Quran from someone in Egypt. And we felt that they needed to get out of the United States because there's too many distractions over there and kids cannot focus in that kind of setup. So uh, they went there. They, she, my wife was staying with, with uh, her sister. We had, uh, they had a, a flat above us and we were, uh, they were below. And so I went to go and visit them because, you know, it was a time and I needed to go and see them every so often. Uh, it was my first visit. It happened to be also that the, the uh, a revolution happened right after that so when all of that chaos broke loose then I had to call them back again but during that time Shagufta Bahan visited us in um, in Bahrain while I was in in uh, Egypt in Cairo while I was there and uh, the same thing that I wanted she also wanted the same thing that my family wanted is to go and visit Imam Busiri's Mazar in Alexandria so we made a trip over there it was a, a road trip uh, and, and you know you see all these accidents along the way it's not it's not uh, a very uh, you know you, you live in the United States and even in Bahrain you have a lot of good rules over here which, which you can follow but in the United States we're very careful and uh, concerned about well you know how these people are driving crazy there's accidents along the way but I've always found that whenever I travel I find that there's hardships when I travel for the sake of Deen there's always hardships in my particular case and Allah knows for what reason there are stories that I have for you regarding that but we made that trip Alhamdulillah we got to Imam Busiri's uh, Mazar in uh, uh, in uh, Alexandria, and it's right by the ocean. You can see the uh, uh, what's it? The uh, not the Caribbean. It's the uh, Mediterranean. the Mediterranean, right? And it's beautiful. The Mediterranean is beautiful. It's blue water, and it's, I'm, most of you uh, people may have seen it. So his mazar is right there by the ocean, and his sheikh's uh, mazar, place of burial, is in a masjid further down close to close to that anyhow uh, when you go into the masjid they have a we and we recorded this they have a certain way of reciting this Buddha and they sit in a square uh, facing each other it was not even a circle square like this and they face each other and then there's another in the middle and and then the sheikh stands on the side like almost like an uh, orchestra and he's guiding the people to recite this in this particular way it's, it's very interesting so after Juma, every Juma, I heard that Purda Sharif was recited after Juma in uh, Alexandria. So we made sure that we go there for Juma. In the Masjid of Imam Buseri, which his Mazar is connected to it, it's in a room separate from the Masjid. Uh, the entire Burda Sharif is written all across the uh, the walls of the. Uh, and every Friday, that occurs. You will find. Um, I've seen, and then when everybody's done, then they go and, uh, you know, read Fatiha or something for Imam uh, Busiri. I do feel that part of the Fez, which is a spiritual flowing that comes from uh, Awliya of Allah, that they du'as and things uh, for your betterment, the betterment of your spirit, uh, that after we went to uh, the, that Mazar visited him and asked uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his wasila to uh, to grant us you know acceptance in, in the, or at least something that will help us improve this the spread of the Burda Sharif and I found that when I went back that uh, we started establishing this monthly gathering of Burda Sharif and was consistent and it became uh, very 
easy on my tongue when I was in Sacramento. Now I've been away from there for a long time. I moved back to Dallas. I didn't have the kind of gathering that mashallah you have over here. So it's a little tough and I'm going to be, have a little tough time with this one, but inshallah, uh, stay within the time. I'll try to finish it within half an hour. Now, just to uh, come to Amma Huzur, who she was, uh, I w was fortunate to meet her in 2006. Made a trip to, it was the Urs, Urs of Hazrat Bacha Meya Qadi, the father of uh, our blessed Murshid, Dr. Muhammad Ahmad Qadri. Hazrat Bacha Meya Qadri's Urs was a uh, few things that I saw that was very, very interesting. Karachi did not have a, uh, uh, for about four years there was no rain, so there was a drought in effect. The day of his Urs, when we stood up to read Fatiha, we all were there and we read Fatiha and the moment we stood up we felt a breeze coming in and I started hearing thunder in the distance and that rain spread not from not just from there it spread through Karachi and went all the way up to uh, to the rest of Pakistan in record number of rain so uh, the point is Hazrat Bachim Mayya Qadri rahmatullahi had some connection with the weather. He used to make dua and people, uh, his duas would be accepted when it would not rain. And then at one time it rained so much after somebody uh, asked him for dua that they had to come back and ask him to make dua again to make it stop. You know, to, and so you know, their duas are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't say that they are the ones who are doing it. We say that they ask their, their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not refuse them, right? So, exactly. So, uh, he, so that was Hazrat Bashi Meya Qadir I never met him. But I had the opportunity and the fortune uh, to actually meet Amma Huzur. I saw her uh, when she was busy working on this Urs very much concerned about uh, the langar, langar e kadriya. that was a main concern. She was always asking two things. One, is there, uh, was the isale sawab done? When the Quran was over, she wanted to make sure that you have to make sure that the isale sawab, the dua for acceptance uh, for that and the gift of the reward to the person who is that wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was one of her concerns. And then the other concern is, Langar e Qadri, as that the, that the food is distributed to everyone over there. In Karachi University, everybody uh, knows uh, Dr. Saab, Hazrat, and they knew his father. There's another wali of Allah who's also buried in the University of Karachi. Karachi. But um, that, so she'd stay up all night, a lot of energy. She was, mashallah, I mean, she was uh, quite old when I met her but she had a lot of energy and when it came, came to feeding people, she was on top of it all the time. Uh, I also saw one thing that when I'm sitting, when she would talk about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she would speak as if she knows him personally, you know, at that level. And she'll say that Sarkar was sitting here and he said this, 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 and I would be like amazed. I mean, is, is this real? Oh, you know, I mean, you get those doubts, right? But then uh, I, I realized that she was not making any of this up because she cannot. It, such sincere uh, and, and certainty that she had, I, I didn't have any doubts after that, right? Now, Amma Uzu would, when you sit with her, she starts speaking about things of Ghaib as well. There's things that the armies of the Jinnah fighting and this is what's happening and you know all of those things she'll talk about that and then she'll talk about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also and this is what he said and this is what he felt and uh, that's that was her but one day when I was sitting uh, with her and as she was speaking and my eye it was very odd it's almost like I zoomed in on a face it was a strange experience I didn't uh, experience something like that but I zoomed in on a face and in her cheek was written the word Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was something I, it just came out to me like this and I was, uh, you know, I've never seen anything like that. But that was uh, a mahzoo. She was definitely 
Fana fi Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was in a state of complete annihilation in, in the zat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She uh, loved the murid, muridin, that anyone who did not, uh, could not meet her, and I remember when she passed away, she looked her was in our, uh, with us. And uh, it was as if she knew her, even though she did not meet her. She talked to her on the phone. But it's, it, it was as if she lost her mother when she heard that news, because I remember she's completely swooned. So she'd loved her murids, and she'd talk about them, and she'd be concerned about them, and she'd do anything for them. That was the kind of person she was. She was more hard on her children, but she was very loving to her murids. Right? So, uh, in Shah, and, and you know, there are many instances. There's a, another incident that when we were going to, uh, to, uh, the Mazar of Hazrat Baba Farid Gan Shakar Rahmatullahi. This is in 2006. We were traveling from, uh, I think it was Shikarpur. I can't remember what place, but there was no bus that went further there. The bus just stopped and dropped us in the middle of nowhere. Me, my wife, and my little baby. We had a baby with us. And uh, now we didn't know how we're going to get to. It was getting nighttime. Nobody wants to take us because they were afraid of brigands on that road. There were people who would uh, rob people still happens <laughs> that still happens so uh, yeah, we found one guy very long hair malang type of person came taxi guy and he said okay come i'll take you so we sat with him and we, we left and it started raining as it rained and this is again one of those experiences where i said i'm you know i'm traveling and i'm also uh, afraid uh, you know there's all these things you're thinking about brigands and you're thinking about uh, you know highway robbery and uh, the rain, you know, this is not, it wasn't just simple rain, it was coming down, it was pouring very hard. And we saw flash floods along the way. And it also saw us, you know, move the car while we were in it on the road. And that Malang guy got up and pushed the car out of it. And it was, you know, a surreal experience because that was, and it happened twice along the way. That it was a just a very difficult uh, hardship that, that I experienced, like I said, when I travel for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I somehow tend to experience these kind of things and I don't know what it is. Uh, just my personal experience. So my wife on the way saw Amma Uzun. Amma was uh, still alive then, but she saw her on the side of the road and she saw her take this uh, staff that she had, a big stick, and, and hit it on the ground and it was as if something completely surrounded the whole area. Like hisar ni banten. That's that. These are the person you know. The, you people are all of you are ahl uh, tasawwuf. People understand these things. I would not speak about these things uh, amongst people that uh, do not personally understand and and experience or understand tasawwuf. Right. This is not things that we speak out amongst common people. Most of the people are muridin. Yeah, I'm just sharing with you some of those experiences. So we saw that, and then the the the. Uh, after that, that whole fear of what will happen just disappeared from us. So we didn't, we didn't uh, have that. So this, this is what some of the things, the karamat that we saw of Allah Huzur. Um, you know, there's things, other things, but I can't remember right now. And I'm, I don't want to lengthen this, uh, <coughs> this speech over here. So let's uh, start with the Burda Sharif. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما نبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم آمن تذكر جيرا 
مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم أمرتك الخير لكن ما تمرت به وما استقمت فما قولي لك استقمي ولا تسودت قبل الموت نافلة ولم أصلي سوى فرض ولم أصمي مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد المبارك وسلم ولا تزودت قبل الموت نافلة ولم أصلي سوى فرض ولم أصمي what contrast these verses have today with the Muslims of today ولا تزودت قبل الموت نافلة and he's saying that uh, before my death before I leave this world I did not uh, as if he's thinking of himself already having left this dunya uh, I did not pray uh, anything but na I didn't do any nafila right so the the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their concern was not just uh, the faraiz which yes it's the biggest concern right but the excellence that they gained was through nafila right and um, there are Muslims today who don't pray Right? I mean, Muslims, not non-practicing Muslims, they just don't pray. So, what a contrast, right? And then he said, وَلَمْ أُسَلِّ سِوَى فَرْدٍ وَلَمْ أَسُمِي And I did not, uh, so I did not pray my fard, and I did not uh, fast, which is talking about the fast of nafil, nafil fast, the fast that, I, uh, that people do other than Ramadan. Right? The awliya of Allah recognize and they know that what they uh, get from nawafil prayers and then you find that amongst the Ahl Tasawwuf there's always these extra prayers and extra things that they're doing in 15 of Shaban and the month of uh, the uh, night of Rajab, the night of Miraj, 27. Extra credit, bonus, right? And uh, these things raise your darajat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They raise your martaba with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, we should definitely make the most of it. They can never replace faraiz though. Okay, so just a word of caution. We just uh, talked about this. People always say that, right? We, just, we literally talked about this before you came. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. There's a connection there. Yeah? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, inshallah, this you are very familiar with this particular uh, way of reading. Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayr al-khalqi kul lihimi Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman
ضرورته إن الضرورة لن تعدو على العصام مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله وكيف تدعو إلى الدنيا ضرورة من لولاه لم تخرج الدنيا من العدم محمد سيد الكونين وثقالين محمد سيد الكونين وثقالين محمد سيد الكونين وثقالين والفارقين من نرب ومن عجم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما سلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل له نبينا الأمير الناهي فلا أحد نبر في حولنا منه ولا نعام هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفا لكل هول من الأهوال مقتحم دعا إلى الله فالمستمسكون به مستمسكون بحبل غير منفاصم مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على خلق كله من مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله فاق النبينا في خلق وفي خلق ولم يدانوه في علم ولا وكلهم من رسول الله ملتمس غرفا من البحر أو رشفا من الديام مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله من مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله وواقفون لديه عند حدهم من نقطة العلم أو من شكلة الحكام فهو الذي تم معنا هو سورته ثم اصطفاه حبيبا باري النصام منزه عن شريك في محاسنه فجوهر الحسن فيه غير منقاسم مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله من مولا يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله دعم الدعاته النصارى في نبيه 
حكم بما شئت مدحا فيه وحتى فيه وانسب إلى ذاته ما شئت من شرف وانسب إلى قدره ما شئت من عذام فإن فضل رسول الله ليس له حد فيعرب عنه ناطق بفام لو ناسبت قدره آياته عذا من مولاي الأحيا اسمه حين يدعى داري سر إمامي مولاي عصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم لم يمتهن بما أعتعي العقول به حرصا علي ناذا لم نرتب ولم نهيم عي الورى فهم معناه فليس يورى في القرب والبعد فيه غير منفحيم كالشمس تظهر للعينين من بعد صغيرة وتكل الطرف من أمامي وكيف يدرك في الدنيا حقيقته قوم نيام تسلوا عنه بالحلوم مولا يعصل لي وسلم دائما عبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل لهيمي مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله فمبلغ العلم فيه أنه بشار وأنه خير خلق الله كله وكل آينة الرسل الكرام بها فإنما اتصلت من نوره ليم فإنه شمس فضل هم كواكبها يظهرنا أنوارها للناس في الظلام أكرم بخلق نبي زانه خلق بالحسن مشتمل بالبشر مطاسم مولا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله كالزهر في طرف والبدر في شرف والبحر في كرام والدهر في همام كأنه وهو فرد من جلالتي في عسكر حين تلقاه وفي حشام كأنما اللؤلؤ المكنون في صداف من معدين منطق منه ومبتسم إلى طيب يعدل تربا دم عظمه طوبى لمنتشط منه ملتثيم مولى يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مولى يصل لي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله
Mashallah. Mashallah. I think, uh, of course, the sisters have been doing it for a while. I know the men have not been in this gathering. It's been mainly a sisters' gathering. So perhaps it's time maybe to get into it, inshallah. Sure. And uh, if you want to do a separate men one, that would be good too. So inshallah. I, I, it takes, and I understand in the beginning, it's, you know, it's hard to read if you're not doing this on a regular basis. I'm going through it fast because I've done it so many times, so it's easier for me. But for those who have not been going, you know, oh, so it's difficult. So I completely understand. Abana mauliduhu anti bi unsurihi ya tiba mubtadain min huwa mukhtatami ya muntafarrasafil fursu annahumu qad undiru bi hulu للبوسي والنقمي وباتي ونكيس رهوى وحوى منصدعون كشمل أصحاب كيس غير ملتئمي مولى يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا
أو عسكر بالحصى من راحتيه رمي نبذا به بعد تسبيح ببطنهما نبذ المسبح من أحشاء ملتقم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد مبارك وسلم جاءت لدعواته الاشجار ساجدة تمشي اليه على ساق بلا قدم كان انما سطرت لما كتبت وروها من بعد الخط باللطم مثل الغمامات ان صار صائرة تقيه حر وقيس للهجير حمي مولا يصلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اقسمت بالقمر المنشق ان له من قلبه نسبة مبرورة القسم وما حوى الغار من خير ومن كرم وكل طرف من الكفار عنه عمي فالصدق في الغار والصدق لم يرماها وهم يقولون ما بالغار من نار مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم ذن الحمام وذن العنكبوت على خير البريات لم تنسج ولم تحم وقاية الله يغنت وعن مضاعفة من الدروع وعن عالم من الأطم ما سامني الدهر ضيما واستجرت به إلا ونلت جوارا منه لم يضم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مي Feel free just to listen to this one. It's very difficult to follow this one, but uh, it'll give you a break also. ولا التمست غنى الدارين من يده لا استلمت الندى من خير مستلم لا تنكر الوحي من رؤياه إن له قلبا ندى نامت العينان لم ينم وذاك حين بلوغ من نبوته فليس ينكر في حال محتلم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله تبارك الله ما وحي بمكتسب ولا نبي على غيب بمتهم كم أبراد واصبا باللمس راحته وأطلقت عربا من ربقة اللمم مولا يصلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم so i'm i'm going to uh, translate and just give a little uh, explanation shara on uh, on this particular uh, verse sarayta min haramin laylan ila haramin kama sara al badru fi dajim min al dhulami sarayta means that uh, you yani rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, you travel by night so uh, the author imam usir rahmatullah alayhi is uh, addressing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and saying sarayta you travel you uh, you travel by night you travel by night min haramin laylan ila haramin from one sanctuary to another to another sanctuary so we'll talk about what are these everybody knows this but uh, want to just make a, a parallel with the verse in the quran okay wa bit kama sara al badru fi dajim min al dhulm kama means as if as if sara as, as if you traveled as if the uh, al badru the, the full moon okay so you have the hilal you have a, a badr you have kama there's different names in arabic that is used for uh, the state that the moon is in at a particular time so the badr is the moon of the white nights the nights of ayam uh, 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 al-bayd right the, the nights when the moon is at the fullest the 14th night specifically the badr and so uh, that uh, what what is uh, interesting about the, the, that night is that it's light giving right and it it guides people and uh, it it is also sheds light in when it's things are very dark so uh, the inference is towards guidance and so if we look at comparing you cannot compare rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the moon like one of them said that how can you compare the moon to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam cannot be compared to anything uh, you know created he is the best of creation right so um, but he is giving an inference for, uh, what is being inferred over here is guidance now this comes from the bedouin who got lost in uh, the desert and he saw uh, he lost his camel and you know in in the desert if you lose your camel and there's no other you know I mean, you're on your feet then and you don't know how far you can go um so he lost his camel and he uh, when he was close to giving up the moon rose at that time and so he uh he said some words in poetry that had to do with guidance that if someone if if one were to say that you are uh that you uh guided that you are a guide then I w- then the moon would then you would fit that description and he'd say some other verses but uh, it, it was a famous uh, i don't remember the verses right right now but it was a famous verse that uh, speaks about the moon being a guide so when we think of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a guide for for the rest of humanity for all of humanity right so uh fi kama sara al badru fi dajim min al dhulami it's as if the moon the full moon travels in in the darkest of nights uh travels a path in the, in 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 the night so this is referring to that verse in the holy quran um subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi baraka hawlahu li nuri yawm min ayatina uh because that verse also talks about if you think about the verse subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi laylan the they said uh, laylan is izafa which it has an uh, uh, it, it, it you do know that sara uh, sarayta or sara which has to do with traveling in the night so already talking about the night Yeah. but it's included in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that verse and because of that he wanted to connect this particular verse with that of the Quran saying that this verse is coming from the Quran itself right so he see also includes 
kama sar al badru fi dajim min al dhulami in the darkness of in the darkest of nights right and he talks about laylan sarayta min haramin laylan ila haramin so he also uses the idafa the additional of laylan which is uh, what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in the quran so he can connect these verses to that so um what uh, in terms of the sanctuary everybody knows amongst you that the sanctuary was from uh, the haram in makkah to the um, haram in jerusalem right which is masjid al-aqsa specifically right uh, masjid al-aqsa the translation of masjid al-aqsa is the furthest mosque the first furthest masjid the fur- furthest uh, place of prayer and why is it called the furthest masjid or the furthest mosque because the arabs at that time uh, knew about that mosque they were it was the kaaba before right and it because of the distance i mean makkah and medina were close but that masjid was very far away so it was the furthest masjid masjid al aqsa okay um, now few things that we also get from the ayat of the Quran uh, and this has to do with belief believing uh, that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were three opinions that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam number one was that he traveled in body and spirit okay body and spirit another one uh, not a popular opinion but that he traveled in a uh in in a dream state his body did not travel that's another but the majority of the ulama the majority of the opinions was that he t- traveled in body and spirit and another one is that uh rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam traveled from uh, his his uh, journey the vertical journey from the haram to the haram was in body and in spirit through ascending Okay so that these are three different opinions but the uh, majority opinion and the acceptable the correct opinion is that of that Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in body, body and spirit and how could he not be because if if Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not travel if it was a dream then why would some of the muslims leave some muslims became apostates when they heard about this because when the kuffar came out and they said to Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu alaykum assalam they said to Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu uh, what do you say about your friend who's making this claim uh, your your best friend he's making this claim that he traveled uh, with a fraction in a fraction of a minute and he came back the same night all the way to Jerusalem and what do you say about that and Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the first thing he said if he said it if Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it then it is true and that's how he got his laqab of Siddiq right so uh, hazrat abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu without any uh, he didn't hesitate for a second even there was no hesitation at all he just accepted it because of rasul sallallahu alaihi said it now there were people amongst the weak of the muslims who actually left the deen at that time right so that that happened and there were people some who had doubts also but alhamdulillah uh, we uh, the the indications in the in the Quran as well the ayat of the Quran itself which says use the the word abd okay subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi uh, glory be to the one who took his uh, his servant by night okay uh, and what that that has to do because Allah could have uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said subhanalladhi asra bi nafsi or ruhi uh abdihi or ruhi uh, the servant or the the uh, in his spirit if that was the case so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no no contradiction over here it's very clear that abd in arabic language when you talk about abd it has to do with the body and the spirit not not just uh, a spirit or otherwise okay uh, there are many many uh, things that we get from Asra the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there's a tradition I don't know if I have time but I can go through the tradition no 
Okay. All right. There's a tradition, and it's a beautiful tradition, uh, uh, hadith of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and goes into fairly detail on how Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taken from gate to gate, and it was asked of him, has he been given revelation? Has he been? Yeah. One was summoned, but another translation: Has he been given revelation? Because it was only the prophets who were taken, who would be taken beyond those points. So uh, that, uh, he, and then he goes and he meets all of the different. Ambiya who had passed before him, uh, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, expresses the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam, and he expresses how Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam was leaning on Bayt, Bayt al Ma'mur, which is the uh, version of the Kaaba that's that's in the heavens, yeah, different levels, and uh, the entire journey of how he uh, faces, uh, he is even shown. The uh, the, the people from the Ummah who will go to the fire as well and, they, and the punishments that they face May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that um, and the giving of Salat and how he goes back and forth between Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the story of Sidratul Muntaha and that Hazrat uh, Jibreel alayhi salam cannot go beyond a certain point because Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam was the only one who could bear it that his wings would would burn out and uh, he uh, one, some said that he was concerned about his wings why because on the day of qiyamah Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam puts his wings under the mu'mineen when they are crossing and when they cross so that he can if they fall down he can put them up again so uh, you know this shows also the love that Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam had for sinners like uh, like myself uh, uh, the uh, you know this ummah so inshallah I will just stop over there there's a lot to be said about that night we have been given the gift of salat on this night inshallah we will be having the class for uh, uh, fiqh we're going to some of the history of uh, the formation of the Hanafi school of fiqh and we will also be talking about uh, madhabs what is a madhab and we go through the entire uh, fardain of uh, salat and taharat and inshallah Psalm. If I could, I have to see if I can prepare for that too. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Barak wa Sallam. I think we should do the last few verses and so we close it. You know it, okay? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. Ya Akram al خلقي ما لي من نلوذ به سواك عند حلول الحديث العمام ولا يضيك رسول الله جاه كبي إذا الكريم تجلى باسم منطقيم فإن من جودك الدنيا وضرتها ومن علومك علم اللوح والقلم يا نفس لا طقنات من زلات عذومة إن الكبائر في الغفران كلما مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل لهم لا على رحمة ربي حين يقسمها تأتي على حساب الصيان في القسام يا ربي واجعل رجاعي غير منعكس لديك واجعل حسابي غير منقارم والطف بعدك في الدارين إن لا صبرا ما تدعوه الأهوال ينحزيم وأين وأذل لصحب صلاة منك دائمة على النبي بمنحل ومصجيم ما رنحت عذابات 
سلام شمع بز میں ہدایت پیلا کو سلام یا الہی واسطہ علی رسول یہ سلام آجزا نہ ہو موسیقی ومن شر حاسد إني لا حسد ولعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس لا الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب في هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون وإلهكم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أحد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم يا الله يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا ذو الجلال والإكرام يا رب العالمين اكسبت our recitation of the Qur'an except our zik, uh, zikr of Allah and zikr of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam except the zikr of the awliya kiram ya rabbil alameen except from us uh, the recitation of the Burda Sharif ya rabbil alameen and except uh, it from us as a complete completion of the Burda Sharif ya rabbil alameen ya kareem ya rahman ya rahim except the, uh, the gathering those who came ya usat those who uh, uh, spoke, those who uh, uh, prepared this gathering, the, uh, the people who hosted this gathering, Ya Rabbil Alameen, accepted from them and accept uh, for any uh, food that was prepared, Ya Rabbil Alameen, accept Ya Rabbil Alameen and uh, accept the good intentions of those who came, those who sat, those who could not come. Ya Allah, grant the thawab of this all to our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to all of the Anbiya and Rasul alayhi wa sallam ajma'een, to all of the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, Azwaj al-Mutahharat, Ahlul Bayt al-Adhar, Khulfa Rashiddin, Ashram al-Bashra, and all of the remaining Sahaba and Sahabiyat, radiyallahu ta'ala wa ajma'een. Ya Rabbil Alameen, grant the thawab also to all of the Tabi'een and Tabi'i Ta'abi'een, rahmat al-Ali ajma'een, to all of the A'imma, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and to all of the Awliya of Allah, especially, Qasul Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, radiyallahu anhu, Khwaja Bawundin, Jishn, rahmat al-Ali, Khwaja Bawundin, Naqshman, رحمت 
when the Chishti Rahmatul Alayhi. Ya Rabbul Alameen, to all of the remaining awliya all over the world, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, and especially to our Murshid, uh, uh, Grand Murshid, Hazrat Bachami, Ya Qadir Rahmatul Alayhi, Hazrat Bibi Makhul, and Isa Rahmatul Alayha, Ya Rabbul Alameen, and to uh, all those people who came in this gathering, their families uh, who passed before, Ya Rabbul Alameen, Grant them the sawab of this mafil, mm-hmm. Ya Rabbil Alameen, and for the generations uh, that are here, Ya Allah, grant uh, the future generations who will not be any any longer grant them the sawab of their, as well. Mm-hmm. And to all those whose graves nobody visits anymore, Ya Allah, grant them the sawab. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, uh, so, uh, grant the sawab amongst the living to our Murshid Park, Dr. Muhammad Ahmed Qadri, and Dr. Abdullah Qadri, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and their families, mm-hmm. and grant the sawab to all of our parents who are with us, our children who uh, are with us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ya Hayy Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayy Ya Qayyum, Ya Hayy Ya Qayyum, Ya Rahmatin Asdaghith, Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Jo Bimare, Ya Allah, Unki Unko, Unko Shifai Kamla, Ila Tafarmana, Ya Allah, Jo Parishan Hale, Unki Parishani Dur Farmana, Ya Allah, Jo Isma Filme Ae, Asiki Ne Asiki, Ya Allah, Unki Opar and Gis. گھر میں یا اللہ نے گھروں میں نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نور اور خوشبو عطا فرمانا ہے یا اللہ ہمارے دلوں میں نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی محبت عطا فرمانا ہے یا اللہ ہم میں سے جو بھی پریشان حال ہیں سب کی پریشانی دور فرمانا ہے یا اللہ یا کریم یا رحمان یا رحیم جو یہاں پہ بچے بڑے ہو رہے ہیں یا اللہ اور جو پڑھ رہے ہیں اس ادارے سے اور جو اس سلسلہ سے منسلک ہیں اور جو متوصل ہیں اس سلسلہ سے ان سب کے اوپر اپنے خاص کرم اور رحمت ہیں عطا فرمانا یا اللہ یا کریم یا رحمان یا جو رزق روزی کے, آ, کے تلاش میں یا اللہ ان کو حلال اور طیب رزق عطا فرمانا روزی عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا اللہ یا کریم جو پڑھ رہے ہیں بچے ان کو اس میں کامیابی عطا فرمانا جو دین میں پڑھ رہے ہیں ان کو یا اللہ اور کامیابی کامیابی عطا فرمانا جو ہمارے بزرگ ہیں ہمارے ساتھ یا اللہ ان کو لمبی عمر صحت و تندرستی عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا کریم یا رحمان یا رحیم ہمارے جتنے بھی علماء ہیں اللہ ان کے اوپر اپنا ان کی درجات میں بلندی عطا فرمانا ہے ہمارے مشدین کی درجات میں بلندی عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا کریم یا رحمان یا رحیم ہم سب کو صحیح راستے پہ چلنے کی توفیق عطا فرمانا سرات المستقیم پہ چلنے کی توفیق عطا فرمانا ہمارے دلوں کے اندر یا اللہ رحمت عطا فرمانا حضور کی امت کے لیے رحمت عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین اور اس کے علاوہ ساری کائنات پہ یا اللہ اور جتنے بھی انسان پرین و انسان کے اوپر رحمت کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمانا یا اللہ ہم سب کو نیکیاں کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمانا برائیوں سے بچانا یا رب العالمین یا کریم یا رحمان یا رحیم یا ذو الجلال و اکرام یا اللہ جو ہماری بچے ہیں بچے رشتے کی تلاش میں یا اللہ ان کو نیک و صالح رشتے عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا کریم یا رحمان یا رحیم جو بھی پریشانیاں ہیں یا اللہ لوگوں کے جو اس ملک کے اندر کوئی پریشانی ہے ان سب کے اوپر ان کی پریشانیاں دور فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا حی یا قیوم رحمت کستغیث یا حی یا قیوم رحمت کستغیث یا اللہ جس طریقے سے شگفت بہن نے اور ہمارے ریاض بھائی نے یہاں پہ اور دیگر بھی حضرات ہیں انہوں نے جس طریقے سے کام کیے اور ذیشان بھائی نے دور سے آئے ہیں ماشاء اللہ اللہ تعالیٰ ان کو دنیا آخرت میں ترقی عطا فرمانا نیکی عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا اللہ ہم سب کے سروں کے اوپر نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی خاص نگاہ کرم عطا فرمانا اولیاء کرام کی نگاہ کرم عطا فرمانا یا رب العالمین یا حی اقی و برحمت اسلوی صلی اللہ علیہ خیر خلقی و علیہ وصحبی اجمین برحمت کا یا رب الرحمین آمین